what's going on everybody and welcome back so in this episode we're going to be doing uh, spark plugs and wires on the Accord just because I've been having a little bit of an issue with the car breaking up under a load so it's really not really noticeable unless you kind of get over 50% throttle then I start to get like some pops and the car is kind of jerky and uh, you know nobody wants jerky uh, it's not good so I need basically to replace the whole ignition system. That's my solution. Uh, this is one of the new wires that I got. These are NGK wires. Same ones I got three years ago in 2018. And you know what? It has been a while. And I was thinking, I was like, no way, the plug wires are bad. I just got them. And then I checked and I bought them three years ago. And I probably had them on and off like numerous times, guys. So, you know, to be honest, it's only, you know, what do you expect? You can only put them on and off so many times, and that's going to be it for them. So I'm just going to go ahead and put these on one at a time, and I'm going to go ahead and put new plugs in as well. And I thought this would be a good time to talk about exactly what plugs I run. So I do run NGK plugs as well. So I got NGK BKR. I'll show you. This is the old one that came out. This is a NGK BKR7E. And so I think we go one heat range colder uh, than the stock plug when I think the stock plugs are a six. Most NA motors are a six, so you go to a seven, which is one heat range colder for a turbo car. And uh, this is the old one that came out. Let's see if it's uh, focusing there. But yeah, this is the old one. You can see it's pretty blackened. It's pretty toasted. And here's a new one that I've gapped. So I'll show you this. And this gap right here, you can see that the uh, the arm there, uh, what do you call it, the guy that it arcs to, uh, I forget what they call it, oh the strap, that's the strap of the spark plug, that part right there is sort of bent downwards uh, onto the tip there. So what that does is brings the gap tighter. So what you want to do is either use, a, they have a spark plug gappers, I was just using a feeler gauge here, uh, so I have a feeler gauge and I would crush it down on the table and try to get it to be 18 thousandths because that's what I'm trying to gap to, 18 thousandths for this uh, boost. It's not a really high boost application so you don't need a really tight gap but I think 18 is pretty good. Anywhere like 18 to 20 I think will be solid but if I do decide to turn it up I think 18 will suffice for a little bit higher than 10 pounds. So that's kind of what I do. Uh, I never had any problems with it like that so I'm going to go ahead and gap all four plugs down and we will achieve um, or 18 thousandths and then I'm gonna go ahead and drop them in this one I took out had a little oil around it so that means something's leaking a little bit the uh, spark plug tube seals or something like that which I already changed but once again been together and taken apart so many times that uh, things get worn out and you have to change parts over and over again but that's just how these projects go anyway this uh, new plug here hopefully should clean up the whole ignition system along with the new wires so it has been probably three to five days since I filmed that last clip. I have since driven the car quite a bit. I took it on a couple of longer drives and I did have more problems, um, but not until I was actually uh, showing off in front of a bunch of people. And uh, I ended up, it just drove funny after that. I kind of did a little rip there and it drove funny. And I don't know if I like took, a, took something out or what happened, but I think my new thing, uh, my new thought is that it could be the uh, main igniter, the ignition coil, uh, that is responsible for this problem. I don't know if you guys maybe have had similar problems, but um, I think I think this guy right here could be the culprit. Um, I know that it's probably never been changed. It looks like an OE part, and uh, I was thinking about. Well, I already ordered a new one because I found one for cheap. Whether it works or not, I'm not sure, but I want to throw it on there to eliminate that as a possibility. Because it seems like the car was having a lot of trouble. After it gets hot, it has problems. When it's cold, it seems to start fine, but when it's hot, I can barely get it started. And I didn't really change much in the tune, and this happened recently. And the car's always had a little miss at idle, and I think maybe that could be due to that igniter. I'm not sure about that. That miss may still be there. It may not be the igniter, but I do have a problem while driving. Uh, just partial throttle. I get like these little blips and these little bumps and I can tell it's missing and it's never done that before and I really didn't change anything in the tune so unless I have some sort of mechanical problem uh, 
you know, or like a crank sensor issue or something like that, which I guess maybe are like a TPS. If I have like a problem with the with the TPS, maybe. Uh, but other than that, I'm not really sure um, what could be going on here. Um, you know, I don't think it's the TPS, but it certainly could be. I guess I just got to try one thing at a time here. Um, these older cars are harder to die with no codes and stuff. I mean, I don't really have any codes, so I don't know what it's going to be. But we're going to try to figure it out. Anyway, I'm taking a little break from this while the igniter comes in, and I'm working on some uh, LS stuff. I'm going to hopefully get you guys to look at some of my LS stuff. And I'm going to use this for the Honda as well. But I made this injector flow testing rig. I think I talked about it before. But basically what's going on here is I have a fuel pump, which is wired up to a switch. I'll show you guys the switches, but it runs and it's going to go into a gas tank that I put uh, on the side of the table and it'll pump pressure into this line, which I plan to use this test port on the, the feed rail here to put a gauge on and I want to see our, our rail pressure and I'm going to power this with a, just a battery that's behind and basically I'm going to get pressure to this rail and then I have a switch that I have to turn on all these injectors at the same time and I'm going to flow them into these graduated cylinders just like so and I'll flow them all at the same time and I want to make sure that everything flows the same amount uh, that way we know we have fully balanced injectors and we know we're not going to have one hole that's running lean and you know could melt a piston or anything like that and this is important when you run higher horsepower and I really should have done it with my car but I never did I have four decapped LS truck injectors in here and I modified the fuel rail to actually fit them and they fit really good they work pretty well and they're a solid, uh, probably 800cc injector, but I never did flow test them to see if they were evenly matched. I never checked if they were leaking, which that could be part of my issue as well. I could have an injector that just constantly leaks, and the reason for that leaking um, could be that it's just a failed injector, and I wouldn't even know. So this is going to help me, so I'll be able to pressurize the rail with the injectors off and see if any of them are leaking. And uh, if any of them are leaking with it off, then I know right off the bat it's a leaky injector. I could either try to clean it or just get rid of it. So it's cool to have this set up. And I'll show you the other side here. But basically, we have a battery that I'm going to hook up. I have ring terminals for a negative, and it's fused as well. We have a 30 amp fuse on here, and the pump probably never will draw that. And then we have a, the power wire, and this is our pump prime, and it's wired up to a relay. I didn't run it through the switch because the switch probably couldn't handle it. So I ran that to this nice relay here, and this, this whole relay setup uh, triggers, this switch will trigger the power to go to the pump, and it'll prime the pump, and then this other switch right here is the one that's going to do our uh, pulse on the injector. So this will, well it won't pulse, it's just going to run flat out. If I had a PWM, uh, like a pulse with modulated uh, setup here, I could actually, you know, command the injectors to go on at a frequency and that would be how they're actually going to run in the car. Um, they are pulsed, but obviously we're just going to run them wide open and hopefully they don't overheat or anything like that. I think it's been done before, so I shouldn't have any issues with that. But it all does work. I tested it. I never ran it with fuel in it, but I did run it just as it sat and it, it does turn the injectors on with the switch and it does prime the fuel pump with this. So um, pretty cool. I'm excited about this. It's a, I think it's a pretty cool setup that I made and I'm excited to test it out. But I'll show you guys about these decapped injectors now, what I'm doing. So you guys can see I have my LS truck injectors, and they're all uh, in our little graduated cylinders here, 250 milliliters. So what I plan to do is flow them for a set period of time, maybe 15 seconds. And then once they've all flowed, I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to check the levels of each of these. And I'm going to make sure that they flow about the same, and I'm going to try to get a good match set. I have the set that are in my truck, which I may tap into. Or I may just go to the junkyard and get some more. Or I may pull the ones out of the Honda too to flow those. Maybe I'll have a nice match in there and I can throw a better match in the Honda and see what those flowed. I'd like to flow all the injectors. And uh, that would be really cool, I think, so that we could get a nice consistent setup here. So I have these guys and I just want to see what they flow base on my rail and see if they flow similarly to what other people have claimed as far as a base rail with my pump setup. I don't know if this pump will be adequate uh, as long as it's reliable and we don't have too much drop off when I do start flowing the injectors, I think it should be pretty good. But the decapped injector method has been used by many and I'm not the first one. I have another video on it, but I'll just refresh your guys' memory. Basically, you can get 
cheap injectors from the junkyard and they look like this out of an LS engine and these work in Hondas too guys so if you are a Honda person and you're looking for cheap injectors uh, these work you just have to shorten your fuel rail they're a bit shorter I've heard about people buying top hats I tried to buy some they didn't fit and I just ended up sticking with what I had but you can see in the Honda here I have these injectors all in there it's the exact same injector you just get them at the junkyard with pigtails and if you get them with the pigtails then you can wire them into your setup uh, and I know that this works with uh, the vehicles that have the resistor box you just set them to I think 12 ohm and uh, that's the way that they run and you use the factory resistor box you keep it in there and everything um, I'm not sure on other models there's some that do and don't require resistor boxes I'm not that familiar but I know with my setup I do still have it it's rerouted underneath but I still have the resistor box um, anyway these can be used so what you do is you decap them in order to get them to flow higher so they flow uh, about 27 pounds uh, from factory and if you decap them which basically means uh, not just this rubber cap you have, or this little plastic cap that you want to take off you uh, also want to take off the this cap right here so you can see if I get it up close this piece here has a sprayer on it and it's basically an open uh, it's a couple of little holes here and the fuel comes out of there and if you were able to grind that cap off with a bench grinder after you take the plastic cap off, you'll see how this looks different. And this is just the open pintle. It's just an open sprayer. So if I hold them up next to each other, you'll see the difference here. Just the open sprayer, and that one has its little cap on it. So the one with the cap doesn't flow nearly uh, as much. It flows 27 pounds, and with a decap, they flow in the 70s, maybe 75 to 80 pounds. So probably like 76 uh, is what I've heard. So hopefully these flow around 76 pounds. I guess we're going to have to do some math and some flowing and we're going to figure this all out. But I hope to have some data for you guys to show you how cool these injectors are and how cheap you can get them. When I initially bought the injectors for the Honda, I had bought just four. And I don't think I took them with a rail or anything. I just took four injectors with pigtails and I think he charged me $15. So $15 for a set of four injectors and all I did was decap them use some modified o-rings you know you have to use different o-rings to get them to fit in the hondas you just got to play around with different o-ring sizes but eventually if you can get something that actually fits then you know you have a nice working setup for like fifteen dollars and injectors can be very expensive you guys would know if you've looked into it um, they can be you know hundreds of dollars so it's pretty cool that you can have something that cheap um, but yeah this is a good option for you guys so the first process to decap these things is to get off this o-ring here so I just uh, stick a pick on there and just work the o-ring off and once you get that off you gotta get this cap off which can be done with a screwdriver you can uh, some of them are easier than others this one looks like a really easy one but if you just pivot the screwdriver like this and you pry upwards on it you can just kinda work it in a circle until you uh, get it to open up and once it uh, once you get to the end sometimes you just gotta like really help it but if you just keep working it you'll eventually get it off here it comes there we go so it came off and now you see we have uh, no cap so now we're able to grind that tip off and we will make it look like this other one that I did right here so what you don't want to do is grind the area that you actually spray with so you don't want to grind the center you want to grind all on the outside and this little ring that you see here is all where it's fusion welded so if you can grind that ring off that's ideally what you want to try to do so I just run it on the bench grinder you can use an angle grinder turned upside down in a vise or if you have a better way to clamp it or something uh, just be careful obviously but you just kind of want to rotate it and I did that in the past you just kind of rotate it on top like this but the bench grinder works too you just gotta be pretty careful so I just go a little at a time just one little zap and then keep it spinning and uh, you know pretty much not much to it it's pretty easy uh, I have never messed one up so it's really not that bad I never even jacked one injector up so it's worth trying it's cheap I'm gonna see if I can set you guys up here so you can watch <laughs>
it is. You just keep going until you get it off. Um, you know, you always end up somewhere close to the center just because of how close that fusion weld is to the outside. But uh, yeah, you just keep going around and eventually you will get it. Um, it's pretty thick here, it's all solid. Um, so I don't think that you should have to worry too much about uh, all that you're grinding. But that seems to be the best way to do it and not hit the pintle. Uh, you just don't want to hit that. And those caps fly off somewhere and they will go somewhere. Just make sure you're wearing uh, eye protection and stuff like that. I also have like a safety lens on this thing which is nice. So yeah, just be careful and uh, this is two down. I got to do two more and then we're going to flow those versus the stock ones and see what the stock ones flow uh, versus the decapped and then we'll decap the rest of them and see what everything flows versus each other and I'm going to have them all labeled and uh, we'll get some data. So hopefully that is uh, interesting to you guys and you guys are excited to see how this process goes. I have all four of them decapped and uh, these are ready to be flowed open sprayer and we'll see exactly how many pounds they flow hopefully uh, in the mid 70s and these guys are the stock ones so I'm just really waiting on uh, maybe a, a fuel pressure gauge here and uh, I just want to make sure that everything is all set up to go I just you know melted some of the heat shrink tubing and I'm going to try to put this pump in some fuel today or tomorrow and uh, power this thing up and see if this whole rig is functioning and then uh, I'll proceed to doing some tests and once we get the test complete we can install them in the truck so that's the plan on that I also do want to see the injectors in the Honda so once I get the truck up and running and stuff like that maybe I'll use this rig while I have it out to just quickly pull the injectors out of the Honda and if I flow those injectors out of the Honda and I do decide one of them is uh, a bit weird I could try to replace it get some more injectors from the junkyard or uh, take the ones from my truck and decap those or something like that and figure it out that way. But anyway, I think that's uh, going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to subscribe if you want to see the uh, progress and the data on this whole thing and uh, also the progress on the Honda because I got much more to do on the Honda as always. But uh, you know, it's at a bit of a standstill. I'm just going to wait for the parts to come in so I can fix it right and uh, wait for some window weld to come in so I can try to glue my windshield moldings on front and rear and center caps and lug nuts and all those little things. I'm just taking a little breather on it. Just try to get it 100% and uh, you know, driving really well. And that's what I really wanna get worked out first. And then I'll worry about go back, going back to the visual stuff. But uh, for the most part, I just want it to be reliable. So stick around and you guys will see that and you'll see some stuff on the truck. I did order um, some parts for the truck, camshafts and springs. So pretty excited about that. I've never put a camshaft in anything, so It'll be my first cam swap, so pretty stoked. Just gotta get some more parts coming, some final stuff. I should be able to start on that. And then once I got a cam in that thing, then I'll learn how to tune the cam, and then I think I'm gonna go turbo after that. So that's the plan, that's the process. Um, I think if I go turbo first, I might make tuning with the turbo and the cam at the same time, or, or you know, whatever. I just wanna learn how to tune with the cam, learn how to tune a stock truck, learn how to tune cams and turbo and you know because I already know how to tune just a stock turbo and you know just just seeing where the fuel goes and uh, how to do the idle tuning with the cam and stuff like that because it is a pretty pretty beefy cam so we're gonna just see how it goes but hopefully you guys are uh, excited for me because I'm super stoked and I just always I love getting into cars and whether it's Honda's or GM or whatever it's just it's all fun to me um, you know as long as it's cheap so that's what I enjoy uh, and hopefully you guys maybe I'll turn some of you guys on to some LS stuff but Thank you guys for watching. Remember to subscribe, like the video, and leave a comment, ask questions. I like answering questions. I answer almost everybody in the comments, unless you're talking smack and I want to ignore you, uh, then I will. But I'll probably get back to you eventually and uh, give you a smart comment. But anyway, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.